Welcome to Our Green Acres. I'm Teresa. Today's video, I'm going to show y'all 10 items that I'm going to get from a thrift store or trash to treasures. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to upcycle and recreate those items just by using some simple techniques and some paint. And then I'm going to style them and show you how you can decorate them in your home. And also, if you're not already, go over and follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, and I also have two Facebook groups. One that's home decor, and also go over and follow me on Our Green Acres. So I hope to see y'all over there. Y'all, this video is also in collaboration with my good friends Trish and Kay over at the Crafting Cousins. We're doing a monthly thrift flip road trip challenge. So I'm going to give you more details of this fun collaboration with throughout the video. So stay tuned for the details on that. Part of this fun thrift flip road trip is to tell everyone where we're located. And y'all, I am in northern Alabama in a little town called Athens. The first project I'm going to work on is going to be this thrifted brush. Now, I acquired this at Goodwill and I paid $1.99 for it. You know, vintage brushes are a big trend right now. And a lot of times you can find them in antique stores, but they can run up in the price. Well, I thought for $1.99, I would just try to give this one a good try and try to make it look vintage myself. I tried to stain it in coffee, but as you can see, it did not take the stain. I did work the little bristles with my fingers just to give them more of a worn, tattered look. So I went over it with some watered down um, antique wax, and then I'm going to go over it with a Waverly Grains Number no. 7 stencil. This can be purchased at Walmart. It's just one of those little stick-on stencils. And I was not going to do the wreath around it. I was going to leave that off, but my brush got happy. So I've got two sides. I've got one that's got the wreath, and then I've got another side that's just got the grains and the number seven. Now I've got a nice vintage-inspired brush, and I only paid $1.99 for it. Tick-tock, the clock is ticking. I don't know what I should do, and I wish you would be right here with me. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance, but now I don't know where you are. Miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late. I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of you, I'm thinking of you. The next item I'm going to show you that I scored at Goodwill was this cute little shabby chic metal box. It was $1.99. I thought it was beautiful just the way it was. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm just going to give you some ideas of how you can style a piece like this if you run across them in your local thrift stores or maybe your yard sales this summer. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance, but now I don't know where you are. I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see. I've lost all my chances, I know that I... Okay, the next project is going to be another fun piece that is so much fun to upcycle when you find them. And you can find candlesticks a lot of times at thrift stores and yard sales and they're usually very inexpensive. This one right here was absolutely beautiful and I found this at my Goodwill. Y'all, I only paid $2.99 for it. Now this piece is not pewter. It is like a really heavy metal. And I did go out and price it out. I usually try to price out my items online before I go and, and paint. And you can see this one retailed for $104 and it's all already painted white. And that's what I'm going to do to mine. I'm going to paint mine white. I went over it with a layer of linen white chalk paint. And then I went out and spray painted with a coat of white. And um, this is the satin finish. And then I went over it with some liquid patina to give it a good top coat. And then I'm just going to style mine very simple with some tied ribbon. Wondering if you're thinking about me too. Now it's too late. Now it's too late I'm out of time But I'm still Thinking of you My heart keeps on bleeding I have scars The ones that healing They're all there because of you It's my fault I'm messing 
Now, while we're talking candlesticks, I also found this one at Goodwill. This one right here is very heavy. It's got beautiful ornate design to it, and this one is going to recreate so pretty. This was $4.99. So, all I'm going to do this one is I'm going to go over it with some white linen chalk paint. Now, when I'm brushing over it, I'm not re being really careful to get in all those little nooks and crannies because some of the gold, if it shows through, that's great. Now, this had a big crack in it, so I'm just going to take my air dry clay. My friend Sherry from Canterbury Cottage taught me this trick. Whenever you have cracks in something, you can repair them a lot of times with just your air dry clay. You just take a little piece, you take some water, work it around and mold it with your fingers. You'll never know that little crack was there. After a few hours and the clay was dry, then I just went over it and gave it one last coat of paint and now you can see how well it looks. I just dressed it a little bit with a baby wipe, but not a lot. And then I'm just gonna show you some different ways of how you can use candlesticks. You know, you don't always have to put a candle on them. You can hang things on them. You can use them for pedestals and risers. Too late. I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of you. I'm thinking of you. I'm wondering if you're thinking about me too. Now it's too late. I know it's too late. I'm out of time. With springtime here and Easter around the corner, we are going to load up today's video with some cute bunnies. Now, I purchased these last year. I got three of them. They come from a yard sale, and I got them for a quarter apiece. They are just kind of like a smoothed out styrofoam type um, bunny. I think you can probably pick these up just at about at any craft store. I painted them three different colors, one with white linen rust-oleum. I did the other one with, I think it was um, faded burlap from DIY Paint and Waverly Elephant. Now I'm just going to go over them with some country chic white wax and I go over all of them. Even the white one, I'm going to put white, white wax on it just to give it a little bit more of a you know, a good top coat. And with this white wax, you just want to brush it on and then you just want to rub it off. But you want it to kind of go in whatever kind of, you know, little crooks, crooks and crannies that you have. Now, these little bunnies were kind of smooth, but they did have some little nicks in them. But it just really tones down, you know, the dullness of your paint, especially if you're working with chalk paint. So I just went over all of them really good with the white with the white wax and then I just got a dry rag and just went over them and just kind of wiped it away. I added some little shabby chic ribbons to them and now I'm going to stage them for you and just see how cute they turned out with a little bit of paint and a little bit of white wax. I'm thinking of you I'm wondering if you're thinking about me too Now it's too late I know it's too late I'm out of time Thinking of you I'm going to tell y'all a little bit more about the monthly thrift flip road trip challenge which i host every month this is our second month so far that i host with my friends trish and Kay, the crafting cousins we're going to have a playlist in our description box so make sure to go out click on that playlist because it's going to take you to other youtube channels where they are going to show you the things that they found at a thrift store or yard sale or maybe they just found on the side of the road and how they're going to recreate it and decorate it and use it in their, in their home. 
So make sure to check out the playlist and hope you get lots of ideas and inspiration. Okay, moving along to the next project. It's going to be another Goodwill score. Now, I got this wooden candlestick. It was only $1.99. I'm going to apply two coats of white linen chalk paint to it, and then I'm going to go around, and I'm going to distress the edges. Now, for this, I'm going to put part of this little farm animal IOD stamp on it, and I just uh, taped off to the part where I wanted to, uh, you know, apply my ink. Just go around, apply your ink, and if you get any on your mat or around it, just wipe it off with your baby wipe. And then I'm just going to, like I say, just go in, put him down where you want him. I'm just going to put part of him on that will fit on the little candlestick. And I think this added so much to it. You know, and now I can set this out for Easter and also springtime. The next project is going to be another thrift store find. Now, I've had this little birdhouse for years, and it was originally brown, and I have chalk painted it through the years and distressed it. Well, I'm going to freshen it up. I'm going to give it a good fresh coat of some white chalk paint. I went over it a couple of times, gave it a couple of layers, and I went back and gave it a little distressing. Now, I'm going to show you how easy it is to add, add transfers to little bird houses and if you've got that little perch on the front you don't even have to take it off i just slit you know a little x or just a little slit in the transfer so it would slide over that little perch and then just go over it with your um, you know your little transfer tool apply it to the front really good and then i went in where that little hole was and i kind of cut it so it would fit down into that hole and you just want to you know scrape it on and then it applies really easy now even that little design that's left on the little clear transparent sheet i'm even going to apply it i don't waste anything so i'm just going to apply it up here in the little point of the house and then i'm going to add a little bit of french wording to the house and then i'm just going to style it for you and just let you see because right now this you know especially springtime we love little bird houses so anytime you see little bird houses out you know always pick those up because they always make great diy projects Now the next project I'm going to show you is how to make a chopstick bow. Now if you follow my channel, you've seen this before, but I try to throw it in, you know, here and there just so, you know, because this right here is such a great tip on how to make a really pretty quick embellishment. You just want to, you know, set of chopsticks, you want a piece of lace or ribbon or fabric that is 17 inches long, four inches wide. You just scrunch it down on your chopsticks and then just tie it off in a knot in the middle. That's all you do. And then you just go around and you can just, tr you know, trim off your ends to where they're consistent and even and then fluff it out. This makes the prettiest, easiest little embellishment for, for your little, you know, home decor pieces. And I just added it to the little birdhouse just to give it another little um, bit, a little shabby chic detail, and it was that easy. Okay, the next project is really going to be a trash to treasure because I this was my inspiration. Y'all, this come off of a Facebook home decor page group and it could have been mine, but if you made that, please comment down below so I can give you credit. 
but that was my inspiration. So I'm just going to take two pieces of pallet wood. I always have this on hand and then I just really, I just turned it over and I glued it on the back with more scrap pallet wood pieces We're using some wood glue. And that's all I did to, um, you know, attach my two pieces of wood together. Now that I got my two pieces of wood attached, now I'm going to go over them with my candle wax. And that way, when I, after I paint, it will be easy to lift the paint off when I distress. Now I'm going to show y'all a new tool that I have received from Iron Orchid Designs. And it is a pack of silicone paint blades. Y'all, these right here are amazing. This is my first time to try them, but you get two sizes, as you can see, and basically it takes the place of a paintbrush. You basically just dip it in your paint and you work it over your wood. Now, since this is kind of a scraper type technique, it goes into the wood grain really well. So you just kind of go over your wood with your little um, blade, and it gives it more to me of a distressed um I don't know. I'm not into dry brushing or distressing things that way. I'd rather just use sandpaper on it, but this right here gives it just enough paint to where you can still see some of the wood grain. So if you like a distressed look and you still want to see some wood, you know, peeking through, this technique right here is perfect. So I just went over it with a couple of coats and I did not have to do a lot of distressing. But this is the amazing part of the quick cleanup. You just run it over some some running water and this is in real time i did not put this in you know fast motion just to show you how fast this cleans up and i'm also cleaning this off with one hand because i'm holding the camera with the other but that is all you do it washes off really easy and then all you want to do is just go in now with a dry cloth and dry it off and y'all it's ready for the next project Versus, you know, cleaning a paintbrush, you know, usually you have to wait for your paintbrush to dry or you have to dry it really well or you're going to have a lot of water left in your brush. So after, you know, I got it painted and the paint dried, I went over it with my plastic scraper and I distressed it. Now I'm going to show y'all, I want my bunny to face each other. I need two bunnies. Well, my stamp's only going to give me one bunny because I want one going in both directions. So to get that effect... I'm going to show y'all a technique where we're going to stamp on tissue paper. Now, my friend Jackie over at Ruth and Ruby did a video on this and also Sonnet with Sonnet's Garden and Bloom. And I'm going to show y'all, um, I'm going to link their videos down below. But that's where I got the inspiration and learned how to do this. But you just take a sheet of tissue paper and then you want to get your stamp. And you just want to, of course, ink it down, remove any excess around the edges with a baby wipe, and just lay it down on your tissue paper. Adhere it down really well to make sure it's got good contact. You know, lift it off. And now I've got one bunny, and now I'm going to do that on the other side, so I'll have two. Because what the tissue paper is going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to flip one over to where they're going to face each other for my project. So I'm going to go on and do the same over there on that side. So I'll have two. You're going to want to, you know, set it up, let this dry really well. I'll let mine dry overnight. And then once your ink is really dry, then we'll cut them out. Now to clean your stamps, just use a baby wipe or you can also use some Dawn detergent or any kind of dish detergent in water and just make sure to clean them before you store them. Now I'm just going to go through now and just go around the tissue paper and cut my bunnies out. And then um, I'm going to get most of the excess off. And, you know, you don't have to trim them um, a lot because this tissue paper is going to be pretty transparent on this white background. So first I'm going to add a transfer in the center because that was, you know, how my inspiration was. And I actually had that very same transfer that, um, that my inspiration had used. So I'm just going to apply that to the middle of the board and I will put the, I will link the transfer book down below of the one that I used for this project. And so now I'm going to take my bunnies. I've kind of, you know, put them down and kind of designed it the way of where I want to place them and just go around and I just took as much of the tissue paper off as I could. But like I say, it's going to be pretty transparent once you apply it. You're not going to really see it. Now I worked in halves. I did one section at a time once I had my bunnies positioned so I didn't lose the position. And I just went down and used some DIY liquid patina. And my friend Jackie from Ruth and Ruby also sells this in her shop. So like I tell y'all, she offers my viewers 10% off. So I'm going to leave her link to her shop down below 
for any of the products that you see in today's video. So then after I got my bunnies applied, then I'm just going to go over the whole piece using the liquid patina and seal it really good. And y'all, I loved how this turned out. And also a big thanks to Sonnet and also Jackie for giving me the inspiration and showing me how to do this little tissue paper technique because I'm definitely going to be using this and doing this more often in the future. I love this little technique. It's kind of like you can make your own transfers out of your stamps. Now using some more scrap wood, I want to show you another technique and I want to show you how to use the silicone blades again. I'm kind of practicing on this day with it and just doing a couple of little projects, but I just go over my little piece of scrap palette wood again. This is just a smaller piece and I give it a couple of coats of paint using my little silicone blade. And I'm just showing you how easy it is. And now I want to show you another way to clean them. You know, I work upstairs, so I don't have a sink upstairs. So every time I need to clean a paintbrush, I have to run downstairs to the sink. These little things, you can just use baby wipes and wipe them off and clean them. So no water was necessary. I just cleaned them off with a baby wipe. So I just went over with my plastic scraper and a sanding block really good. I'm just kind of going around the edges. And then I'm just going to wipe it off really good with a, a good clean cloth. And now we got a great surface. Now, y'all, I've got it, the new IOD transfer book. I'm going to leave a link down below of the name of it, and it's got some great little vintage, you know, kind of like little seed packs, and it's got some sheets. It's got some really pretty florals in it, but I'm going to use this one, and I'm going to put this on my little scrap piece of wood, and then I'm just going to apply it using my little um, scraper tool, and then you always want to go over and burnish it with that little you know, plastic uh, clear film. Now, y'all, this is a new product. I've got this link to my Amazon store. My neighbor Barbara asked me one day if I knew they had <laughs> vintage Mod Podge, and I'm like, no. Well, of course, I had to order some, and we're going to try it out. But anyway, y'all, this Mod Podge right here is antiqued. So when you put it over your project, it's going to give it more of an antique look. Now, it's going to be a subtle look, but it does work. I used it. Uh, this is like a little test board. I'd already distressed and painted this white on a previous project, but I did that one little slap and put a little bit of that antique Mod Podge on it, and you can definitely see it gives it a vintage um, antique look. My life was great till you added colors. Like the moon is the snow, we don't care about the Okay, y'all, we are coming to the end of today's video, and I hope y'all enjoyed seeing all the Trash to Treasures and all the thrift flips I did. It just goes to show things that people no longer need or want, and how we can find those things as treasures and take them home, recreate them, and decorate our homes with them. And we've got some great and unique decorations on a budget, and we didn't spend a lot of money on them, and we had fun making them. So y'all, make sure to go out, check out the playlist in my description box. Make sure to go out, watch all the videos, because I know there's going to be some great upcycled items, and I can't wait to watch. Don't forget to go over and check, check out the Crafting Cousins, Trish and Kay. Make sure to check out their channel. I'll have a link down below. And also, I'll have everything that I used in today's video of where you can get these things. I'll also have all that information in my description box. As always, y'all, I appreciate each and every one of y'all. I love y'all, and I will plan to see y'all in my next video. Bye, y'all.